it's required of us to exhibit emotional control, to be able to manage our emotions, to be able to still walk towards the mission, push towards the goal, regardless of how we feel. Okay, and that's a part of being a part of something. Bigger than yourself, which is hard for a lot of people in this society to do. They haven't seen it. They don't know what it looks like. Um, it's just not a part of this societal culture here. You know? So they don't know. But you learn it as you get into these scriptures. It's required. Yeah, this is uh, the beloved brother, Yawan. And I want to go into uh, some of the comments that he made. First of all, Shalawan, Kong Laimla, Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakhak Kadash, all praises be to the Most High Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel. Throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders and great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. A true disciple. So the best mindset and the truth that works effectively is just becoming as a child and just submitting to the will of the spirit. <clears throat> so just like a man's wife is commanded to submit unto him, entering into the truth is the same thing. <clears throat> there is a submissive mindset. So it's putting off the ways of what we learn in the world being impulsive and being a brute beast or being a bully. So the spirit transforms our way of thinking. So I want to go here at first. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's the spirit. I didn't know I was on this chapter. Jeremiah 4 and 14. And then we're going to come back up. Jeremiah 4, verse 14. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? So the ways of Babylon is vain. Trying to figure out how to get the biggest and best house, the biggest best car, trying to look the best, trying to get the best woman or the best man, when in reality, everything here is temporal. Everything here is just a test phase, and it's not forever. So this entire alternate lifestyle that we've been shown, or alternate reality, is AI, it's artificial under Edom. The medicine is not genuine. The philosophies that we've learned here is not authentic or genuine. Everything here is AI, artificial. Even when you go into that word technology, techno, to falsify or doctor up. So it's not worth investing all of our energy or putting all our eggs in the one basket. So this is a mindset cleansing to being washed by a new way of thinking, to look at the world differently. Really, we ought to be numb to this world. Let's go to Luke 14, the book of Luke chapter 14. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. <clears throat> Luke 14, let's go to verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife 
and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. This means prioritizing serving our husband first. So this message is to the men. So we're not supposed to put a business or a career or a family lifestyle before serving the will of our Heavenly Father. Let's look up this word, disciple. Matter of fact, many women, let's say they have kids by another man. And let's say their husband dies and then they, they marry again, which is lawful. They'll put their kids before their husband, which is off. So now you got the kids running the household. That is a dysfunctional family. It's off. The priority is to that husband. That's the head. That's the order. But usually we get seduced by what we think, what we feel. And we succumb to our emotions in this system that we're under. Let's look up this word, disciple. And that word, disciple, goes back to being disciplined. Not reliant on our own emotional, sentimental reasons. But the spirit, the spiritual will. <clears throat> disciple. <clears throat> so lock you. Disciple. Looks like mathetis. Mathetis. In the Greek. And it means a learner. A pupil. So it goes back to being a disciplined student. A pupil is a student. <clears throat> this is beautiful. We're the apple of the most high's eye. So the right mindset is that as of a child. Because then we're not, we're not counting years. We're not counting how many years or time we've invested. We begin counting integrity, dedication, devotion, which are the intangibles, the reins of our heart or our mind. Did not we read that in Jeremiah 4 and 14? So we start looking at the spiritual component. How well vested are we? Are we devoting our lifestyle to this ministry? Or is it just a side gig, a side kick? Are we treating the truth or Sophia wisdom as a side chick? That's the question. Let's go back. Luke 14 and 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So the priority is to serve Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, because the kingdom is at stake, an eternal paradise, something that's beyond our wildest dreams, literally beyond our imagination, unfathomable. So the end justifies the means. By walking the straight and narrow path set before us by the light of the world. Yahawashai. So this is due diligence. Laboring. Bearing that cross. It's burdensome on this side. But really, when we look at it, it's a light yoke. Compared to the eternal rest or the reward of the gift of the kingdom. Luke 14 and 28. But which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it? So this is a life term investment. <clears throat> Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation 
and is not able to finish it. And all that behold, it began to mock him. So the journey is a tedious journey, <laughs> troublesome waves and storms. But if we're following the rock of Yahweh Shai, then we are on a stable foundation because he's already risen up, exalted on the right hand of the Heavenly Father. So this formula is tried, tested, and proven. We're not given a experimental formula, but we know that it works. Built on Yahawashai. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. See? Verse 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord, Yahawashai, shall raise up us also by Yahawashai, and shall present us with you. So the reward is bigger and better than what we can even try to imagine in our own mind. Our mind is not vast enough in these bodies, in these mortal bodies, to even <laughs> conjure up what we can expect to receive. All we know is from the eyewitness accounts of Yahweh Shai being raised up, resurrected from the dead, and serving as a witness of the immortality to come. So this is not a make-believe story. We have eyewitness accounts of his res resurrection, his teachings. So we know what we are consuming works. This is a life tonic that's tried, tested, and proven. <clears throat> For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God. When we go into that word redound, it's <coughs> abounding. Fancy way of saying abound. Let's look it up. Abundant gives us a clue. It's abounding. We'll look it up. Redound. <clears throat> so mock you, read down. Yeah, right here. Second Corinthians four. <clears throat> and it means it comes from the Greek Periseo Periseo and it says See, abundance, to be better enough and to spare, to excel, increase, be left, over and above. So we cannot invest enough, but rely on the mercy and grace bestowed upon us by Yahawashai Hamashiach, through or from the Most High. So this is a small labor in comparison to the eternal kingdom. But without faith, we're not going to reflect that in our actions. Our actions are going to be incomplete, inadequate, minor, <clears throat> because we're not moved by faith and fear. And this affects our understanding when we're not moved by faith and fear, then we're just reprobate in the faith, which causes us to have a limited understanding of the doctrine. Once again, the fruits of the Spirit determines a man, not what he looks like. <clears throat> For our, Let's go here, see? I was getting ahead of myself. 2 Corinthians 4 and 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the 
inward man is renewed day by day. So the inward man is being driven or transformed by the spiritual discernment, not being moved by what we're seeing in the flesh. You see, so we're unaffected or numb to the fleshly realm or the earthly realm. And this is a part of that transformation, mortifying the members of our body or our flesh, which means killing the flesh. So we're moving through as a good soldier, hardened by the adversities and the afflictions of sickness, soreness, migraines, fatigue, working through those things as a good soldier on a spiritual battlefield. Let's get that. We'll come back. I'm not going to make this long. Second Timothy 2, verse 3. Now, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Let's look at that word, endure. <clears throat> endure. Endure hardness. Comes from the Greek. Kakapatheo. Cock up a theo, and it means afflicted to suffer, undergo hardship, to be afflicted, to endure. So this goes back to durability, bend but don't break, because we're leaning on our faith, which is tied to the rock of our salvation. So that rock does not dissipate or fall apart. Neither does it move because we've seen the glory of Yahawashai in his risen state. Eyewitness accounts. No man that wore entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So really, we should not be easily angered in the flesh. Many people are just actors in this movie. They're not amongst the elect. Lord willing, I'm amongst the elect. But my point being is, we are rehearsing the righteous acts. So many people are extras in the movie if you will, to help shape or chisel and help to stretch the limit of our patience and faith. So there are tools being used, tools of chastisement, just like evil E is. So not being caught up into this web of Babylon, Second Timothy 2 and 4, no man that warf, no man that warf entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So that's a spiritual warrior. See, Second Corinthians 4 and 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So what we cannot see is made of the Most High, the Ancient of Days that created time. So it cannot be destroyed. So the heavenly realm 
is what we're trying to take part in or obtain. The Bible says that that kingdom, the kingdom is going to be established on earth. So Yahweh Shai's throne of David is forever. Everything here, cars, women, jewelry, houses, are all temporal, have a shelf life, are going to fade away at the destruction of the daughter Babylon and the fall of Edub, this last ruling kingdom. 1 Peter 3 and 12, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So there's a two-third wicked set of Israelites that are just pretenders. They're imposters. They're fakes. Crept in unaware. And some of them have 20 plus years. Look at IUIC. They boast on years of service. But they've been teaching lies. Moving beyond or abounding further than just knowing we're Israelites. But what they're doing is trapping and ensnaring souls, teaching hell. Many are afraid to leave the IUIC because they're trapped under that fear of hell. A RCC doctrine or Roman Catholic Church. They're still calling on Jesus Christ. So only the elect is going to be converted or born again. Put off the world, mortifying the flesh, only the elect. That's whose prayers the Most High is hearing right now. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? So the Lord protects his elect and answers their prayer. And that's why this kingdom is on its way out. Because the elect are being converted, born again, and becoming sovereign citizens again. Restored back to the commonwealth of Israel. So the Most High protects sovereign land, his elect. First Peter 3 and 14 but and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. So Jacob's trouble is only a phase, stepping stones to enter into the kingdom, the straight and narrow path of tribulation, to enter into a broad field of rest, immortality, peace. 1 Peter 3 and 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So the hope we have is given to us through the gift of faith because we trust in what we can't see. We have the testimonies of our fathers. We know their stories. We know their redemption. We know their troubles that they face. And we know that the Most High kept them and brought them back through every third and fourth generation. So we have hope in the eternal and are not being dismayed or in despair because the temporal plane for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing just like Shai suffered he did not get moved in the flesh or tempted in the flesh but resisted the temptations of this world and the wiles of the wicked. 
I don't like the scripture right here. Proverbs 16 and 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. So the weapons of our warfare are spiritual. Look at the world, how much it's changed since J July of 2007, since the word has been changing the elements of this world, altering the course of this world, restoring it back to the most high's course, his way. So the word is a sword. This word is like a bowling ball, knocking down the pins of these nations, their gods. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. So if we're moving on the spirit of the Almighty, then that is a safe path. That is a right azimuth or direction of travel. <laughs> Although we come across the snares and pitfalls of life, we have a sure path to following the instructions set before us by the Most High <clears throat> through Yahawashai. See right here, Proverbs 20 and 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly, trying the reins of our heart. Are we sincere? Are we just following somebody that we like or that we are entertained by? Or are we convicted in our spirit? Has the word penetrated our soul, our mind, deep into our mind. Psalms 26 and 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. So that heart goes back to the Hebrew law, which is mine. So if the spirit is if we're following the Spirit, then we're not being easily swayed or moved by someone calling us names or treating us badly, treating us unfairly, smearing our name. You see, insulting us. Why? Because we're not operating on a fleshly, carnal level. So the Spirit takes over. And we're operating in the spirit of Yahawashai, slow to anger, using wisdom to navigate through the valley of the shadow of death, gross darkness, wickedness, deceit, mischief. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahawashai, Bahashem, Kwakadash. So, through the Holy Spirit, we are focusing on the things eternal, the heavenly, and not the carnal, temporal, earthly plane. And if we're focused on fleshly desires and lusts, then we're bound in these bodies, chains of darkness. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. Call me a shawala. And abide the ball. We got next. Lord willing. Barak Adam. Shalom. Of us to exhibit emotional control, to be able to manage our emotions, to be able to still walk towards the mission, push towards the goal, regardless of how we feel. Okay? And that's a part of being a part of something bigger than yourself, which is hard for a lot of people in this society to do. They haven't seen it, they don't know what it looks like. Um, it's just not a part of this societal culture here, you know, so they don't know, but you learn it as you get into these scriptures. It's required.